For all the hardcore Nikola Tesla fanatics out there, and there are a lot more now than there used to be 20 years ago, because humanity is starting to realize that the guy that invented the modern world, Nikola Tesla, and those that followed him, like Oliver Heaviside, James Clerk Maxwell, these are the people that created the modern world, and not a fuzzy-haired crackpot with a theory who never invented a damn thing, Einstein. People that are fans of Tesla, which are ever-growing, are going to find this uh, information fascinating. One of the things that people scoffed at Tesla about big time, and they still do, was his premise that energy transmission over distance, without it being lossy, meaning losing energy, scattering off and going everywhere, you know, was an impossibility. We scoffed at Nikola Tesla for this, but now we're starting to realize, and I'll give you a very, very simple demonstration of this, and a mention of someone else that has perfected this technology that I've been in contact with, the notion that we thought, well, we are, there have actually been a few patents recently, for example, that are able to transmit one watt of energy wirelessly to charge your iPhone and your iPad with an attached device, and it uses directional uh, Yagi uh, antennas to seek out or sniff out your device, but it is still an incredibly lossy form of power transmission, and it's only one watt, and you would not want more than one watt, which is not much to be transmitted like that because your cat and your dog are really sensitive to that sort of wireless power transmission and if you have one of these devices and it were higher than one watt of output and the people that invented this know this your dog and your cat would start foaming at the mouth and probably clawing at their own crotch because <laughs> because the power transmission that was wirelessly transmitted to your house and that's only one watt so people have been scoffing at Nikola Tesla now for a long time that the notion of a high power wireless power transmission was an impossibility because it would just scatter all over the damn place but now we're able to understand something much more clearly okay and remember when I showed you a demonstration a few days ago of the fact now we're looking at the plane of inertia along this magnet which is right down the center it's not located there but it's a pressure field mediation which you can't cut it out. You can never cut out North Pole or South Pole. I explained this in great detail a few days ago. Okay? It's a plane of inertia. What happens is, over a greater spatial difference, the pressure mediation, and this is a string, this is too long for the dielectric inertia plane to sit at the center. If I take two or three magnets, let me take off two of them here and put them down. Okay? If I just take two of these, the plane of inertia will sit right there in the middle. You can see it, right? Well, that's all well and fine. But with too great of a spatial distance, let's just say this is a longitudinal transmission here. This is really long. The plane of inertia can't sit at the middle here because there is too much spatial phase between this end and this end. So it cannot exist as a plane of inertia. Mother Nature works by simplex pressure mediation. So how does Mother Nature distribute, and I talked about this the other day, distribute the plane of inertia when the plane of inertia is too huge, i.e. a longitudinal transmission like this. As I showed you, if you're able to look up close, and you can buy a set of these if you want. These are just like two millimeter cube neodymium iron borons. It distributes itself in a double helix and a vortex, exactly like, except this time, it is inverse to light. Now the circuit of light, listen closely here. You better damn pay, pay attention closely here, okay? In regular light, Light is a coaxial circuit. We have transverse electrical and magnetic and a longitudinal plane of dielectric pulses. Actually, excuse me, the pulses are right here where the electrical and magnetic are at their null point. Okay? And with increasing frequency, like blue light towards the blue end of the spectrum, we have more pulses, which is why we have... This is also uh, the explanation for the photoelectric effect, which no, Einstein uh, won a, uh, a Nobel Prize for, but he gave the wrong, he made correct observations, but incorrect conclusions. This is why we have more units of power on, like, say, blue light, okay, as opposed to red light. We could say this is red light and this is blue light. Okay, well, that's fine. We have transverse electrical and magnetic field perturbations 
resultant to the longitudinal dielectric pulses which exist here. But the longitudinal, this is a coaxial circuit. You know what a coax cable looks like, right? You know, it has an outer sheathing of copper and a central conductor core. Coaxial circuit. Light is a coaxial circuit. We have electrical and magnetic transverse, okay? And we have longitudinal dielectric pulses, which occur here. Okay, now these are the power. By the way, this little thing right here is what the idiots of quantum mechanics and general relativity called das Liquant, or what the common idiot calls a photon. There is no such damn BS as a photon. It doesn't exist. It is a misunderstanding of a dielectric pulse, okay? Misunderstanding, big time misunderstanding. So, what does this have to do with high power? Not just power transmission wirelessly, we can do that. But high power, high directionality, non lossy, meaning it's not, you know, you, you spray out a water hose, you know, water goes left, right, goes all over the damn place, right? A lot of it, you know, you shoot out 100% of it, but only 10% of it reaches the target at the end, right? Okay, lossy. Some people are like, what are you talking about when you mean lossy? It means you shoot out 100%, but only 10% reaches your target. What we have here is by creating a helicoil of the plane of inertia around an electrical longitudinal pulse perturbation, and I am in direct contact <laughs> with the person that I've seen demonstrate. They're not on YouTube, sorry, no. Now, when you're seeking a patent and you made a huge discovery, you're not going to post videos on YouTube. You have a longitudinal electric. So now, at every transverse, we have the dielectric in a double helix, or the plane of inertia, that is corkscrewing around a pulse perturbation. And so what we're able to have is the, gro the holy grail of all humanity, that which, let me make a point here, the holy grail of what everybody's been scoffing at Nikola Tesla, oh, that's not possible. No, 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 that's not, not possible. The holy grail of what Nikola Tesla said was possible. And we said, no, it's not possible. Well, it is possible. Longitudinal wireless high voltage transmission. Here's the real holy grail in actuality. At least this is what my buddy calls it. Wireless high voltage transmission. WHVT. all by inversing the common circuit of light with transverse electrical and magnetic and replacing that with transverse dielectric. So here, hold on a second. Here we have transverse electrical and magnetic longitudinal dielectric pulses that makes up the coaxial circuit that is light. Okay, and down here what we have is longitudinal transmission of electric with transverse helicoil, helical dielectric. Up here we have light and down here we have high voltage power transmission. That which all the assholes of quantum physics and general relativity has said, Nikola Tesla, no, 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 we love Nikola Tesla, invented my, no, 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 no. High voltage power transmission, wirelessly, not possible, it's too lossy. In other words, you'd shoot out 100%, and at eye line, you would get maybe 5 or 10%. Well, it, that's a waste of energy. You know, if you're transmitting out 100, and you're only getting 10%, no, 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 no. From what I've been told, the efficiency of this form of line of sight, LOS, line of sight, and all you'd have to do is have line of sight. You know what line of sight is, right? Curvature of the earth, right? Line of sight. 
the LOS, let's say we're looking at about 40 miles here, okay? We got transmitter A and receiver B. Person looking for the power here, person transmitting the power here. Line of sight efficiency of 95 plus percentile. The only thing you would need is a repeater due to LOS, line of sight curvature. So you'd be transmitting to one, transmitting to the final. This would be a repeater right here. Just the same thing as a cellular repeater. Nikola Tesla's supposed great error of wireless power transmission is very, very soon to be revealed and realized. Field theory is little known, but it's also undeniable. Simply by inverting, did I write that on the other side? Simply by inverting the electrical and magnetic as we have in the circuit of light. with the dielectric, we're able to create longitudinal, high voltage, wireless power transmission. So everybody who loves Nikola Tesla, it's now time to stand up and cheer. Okay? This is not theory. This is current working prototype. Not my prototype, I wish. <laughs> what the heck? This is current work. You know I have a lot of people looking at my videos on field theory. How many of those you think have been contacting me? I get lots of emails every day about inventors and designers. I've already seen working line of sight, high voltage wireless power transmission based upon the principles of Nikola Tesla that people have been scoffing at now for decades. It's not possible. It's not possible. Well, it is possible, but it would be incredibly lossy. You know, you can't transmit 100% over here and end up with 10% over here. We can't lose 90% of the energy in transmission because this is what everybody thought wireless power transmission would be. Okay? Everybody thought it would be this. And they thought this is why we have the transmitter over here, the receiver over here. We thought we're going to transmit out 100% here. And it's going to go all over the frigging place and ultimately we're going to end up with 10%. This is why everybody thought Nikola Tesla was wrong in short. But the reality is 95% efficiency longitudinal power transmission. Exactly the same principle that I demonstrated to you here is that the plane of inertia over a longitudinal phase this is called temporal displacement. Temporal displacement. Actually, and what this is, temporal displacement PM. Temporal displacement phase mediation. In other words, the plane of inertia is corkscrewing like a helix, like a DNA helix, around this longitudinal string of magnets. This is the secret, the huge secret that Nikola Tesla died with, that everybody was told about, but nobody believed, but has now been realized. And within the next five years, humanity will actually realize wireless high voltage power transmission. If I'm lying, I'm dying. So this is a big clap out to Nikola Tesla. You were right to the entire time and the rest of the people that doubted you on high voltage power transmission have now been proven to be a-holes. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you can make a tiny donation or you could tell me to jump off a cliff. It doesn't matter to me either way. I would be happy to receive the former rather than the latter, but I am happy enough to know that Nikola Tesla's great dream that has been so long denied will be very soon realized and has already, past tense, been confirmed to be true. Thank you for watching. Lux Iveritas and love to Nikola Tesla. Goodbye.